thank you for joining me tonight. I've got another edition of Packing for Milson. This time it's an international version. Uh, a lot of people have told me that they liked my Packing for Cold and Rainy Milson game, so I thought, why not do an international Milson packing list since uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So I've got everything laid out in front of me right now that I am going to be taking to Milson West Assault on Coro. It is in uh, Mazatlan, Mexico. I believe that's where it is right now. Uh, they had to change the venue last minute, but um, anyway, it's still happening. So uh, I'm ready to go. I've got everything packed up. First thing I'm sure what everybody wants to know is how do you travel internationally with airsoft guns? And it varies from country to country, so the important thing is to make sure that you know the laws in the country that you're traveling to. The other thing is, is a lot of times event organizers, if you are traveling internationally, event organizers will be really excited about that and they will help you out with everything that you're going to need in order to travel to their country. So Milson West has done that for us. Um, We've got a couple, a couple items that are going to help us getting through customs and things like that in order to make sure that we don't have problems when we're going through customs. So I'll cover that first because I know that's what a lot of people are most interested in. Uh, behind me, I've got basically just a declaration that has our names on it and it has the articles in Spanish that show that you can bring replicas in and it also shows that we are there for a game. Now they have cleared this with all the federales there in Mexico, so the airport that we're flying into, they should all know that, but we know how politics and government works, and a lot of times information doesn't get passed around, so we've got backups just in case. Here I've got a bunch of documents. This is from the Mexican government, and it's signed by people in charge and stamped and that was sent to us so we can all here i'll show you guys it's basically just listing what's happening um some of the laws how they work and they're signed by all the officials so i've got i think this is eight pages of documentation that shows that everything we're doing is legal that it has just been approved by the mexican government so I take this, this copy, I'm going to keep in my gun case. So in our gun case, we've got our two guns, our lights, and uh, all of our mags. And it will also have a copy of the laws and the signature showing that it's been signed off by all the local officials so they'll know whenever they look through our luggage. Hopefully. As far as what gun am I taking? <laughs> The other important thing is when you're flying internationally, I don't recommend flying with your baby because there's always a chance that the person that you deal with in customs is having a bad day and they're just going to take all of your stuff no matter what. So Jet and I like to take what we call burner guns. Um, this is a SEMA Contractor AK. This was on one of the Black Friday sales from evic.com. So I was able to pick it up. It was only about $100. So I'm taking a $100 gun with me to Mexico. I'm gonna use it straight out of the box, see how it performs. This way, if anything happens and something happens to my gun or customs decides to seize it, then I don't have to worry about losing one of my babies. Um, $100 gun, SEMA, you can't go wrong. So that's what I recommend. Uh, I've also got uh, Olight. This is the Valkyrie, Valkyrie PL Pro 2. I'll be taking that and I'm going to mount that to my gun. The other good thing about Mexico is no one has night vision there, so you know everybody's going to be using white lights. So, good thing to pack your uh, pack a flashlight for sure. And speed loader. Since I'm going to a Milsim West game, I don't have to worry about flying with BBs because they issue all the BBs there. So that's nice. Let's see. Let me move on to the rest of my gear that I'm going to be taking. 
for my uniform. It's supposed to be about 80 degrees there during the day and about 60 at night, so I definitely don't need anything too warm. I've packed my summer partisan suit, aka Russian pajamas. So comfy. This is one of my favorite, favorite camos because it blends in pretty much everywhere. And oh, this camouflage. Is, these BDUs are like the most comfortable BDUs you can ever wear. I love it. All of this you can get from Gray Shop in case you're wondering where to uh, pick up Russian gear. Almost everybody buys from Gray Shop. Just be forewarned that sometimes Gray Shop will get you your stuff in like two weeks. Other times they'll get you your stuff in like three months. So they're a little unpredictable. Try to have a backup plan if you ever order from Gray Shop because you never know if you'll get stuff in time sometime. All right, got that. Um, I'm also going to be taking my gaiters. Since it's supposed to be humid there, I imagine there'll be lots of dew in the morning. So this will keep, um, I like to wear these in the mornings just to keep my feet and the bottoms of my pants from getting all wet. That will be handy. And underclothes. I tried to pack a warming layer and then also for you ladies, if any of you are ladies watching this, I like to wear compression shorts. So I packed these. This is what I wear. Um, this way I can wear these under my clothes and then I don't have to worry about changing in front of people or anything like that because I'll have compression shorts and a tank top on under my uniform. So that way if I need to change or do anything like that, uh, I don't have to worry about it when I'm surrounded by a bunch of dudes. I've got uh, fleece bottoms and my Russian top, Tony top. Pro tip, when you're packing everything, try to put as much as you can into Ziploc bags, then you uh, get all the air out of them and close them and everything packs much smaller and vacuum sealed plus then everything's organized so you can just go through your different sets of bags and be like oh here's my socks here's my clothes here's all my toiletries so i've got everything sorted so hopefully i won't be searching through my bag looking for stuff Okay, socks. I've got four pairs of socks in here. I try to change my, so I not try, I definitely do. Having comfortable feet is like the most important thing in your happy, positive milsome experience. I recommend wearing a uh, smart wool socks. That's what I have packed in here. Um, I've got a pair so that way I can change at least once a day, if not twice a day. I've also got a pair of super warm wool socks that I can wear at night in my sleeping bag in case I get cold. It's only supposed to be a low of like 60, so I don't really see myself getting cold. Um, but you never know, always pack extra socks because literally having comfortable feet, warm feet, dry feet is morale changer. Trust, trust. No, oh, no, my clothes are too full. Anyway. Toiletries! Very important to bring toiletries with you. So in this bag, I've got a travel set of toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, lotion. You'd be surprised uh, when you're sweating a lot and then it all dries up, your skin will tend to get really dry. So I like to have a little bit of lotion. Plus I have eczema and so that tends to exacerbate the situation. So having lotion for me is kind of a must. Also in this bag, I've got face wipes. These are exfoliating face wipes. This is what I can use to clean my whole body. Uh, that is definitely necessary. Plus, butt wipes. Don't forget your butt wipes because you will need them. Uh, there's no guarantee, especially in Mexico, that um, there's going to be a place to go to the bathroom and that it will have um, toilet paper. Usually at most Milsims, you have to make sure that you bring pretty much all Milsims. Make sure that you bring your own toilet paper with you because you may have to poop in the woods. Pretty common. 
And then lastly, I have um, antibacterial wipes. This is what I can use to clean anything. I can clean my hands. I like this because wipes I can use to like get under my fingernails and really scrub areas like your hands because they get pretty, pretty dirty. So I really like having antibacterial wipes to wipe off all the dirt and stuff. Um, also helpful for, <laughs> I don't know if this is good or not, but I also use these to help clean some of my, uh, my containers that I eat out of. Uh, next on the list, don't forget your boots. I just bought these and, um, we'll see how they work out. I need to have something with ankle support. Hiking boots are a necessity for if you're going to like a hardcore Millicent game because you're going to be on a lot of uneven ground. You have to rough all of your stuff into the field that you're using for the whole weekend. So it's good that you have a good shoe with lots of support. I wore these today in the gym and I try to wear them around to break them in so that way I'm not breaking them in at the game. It's very important to do. And then when I'm not wearing my boots, I like to take a pair of flip-flops with me. So when I get back to my camp and I want to take off my boots for a little bit, I can still walk around if I've got my flip-flops. So I'm packing those. Another important thing, trash bags. You always need trash bags when you are going uh, camping, hiking, anything. So I keep my trash bags here. I've got my eye pro. These are the, whoop, whoop. This is my favorite pair of iPro. These are the Smith Optics Aegis. I put a link to these if you want to check them out on Evic. I put a link on my Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm the Tactical Unicorn. I try to share helpful stuff on Instagram a lot. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, follow me. And uh, I'll share lots of helpful hints and show you where you can get all my stuff too, because everyone always asks. Got gloves, these are Evic EMG gloves. These are the, the quick ones. <laughs> Don't forget your gloves. And of course, if you guys have been following me for very long, you know that I messed up my ankle really bad last year in Mexico. So I've got my ankle braces, I packed two just in case, <laughs> in case I lose one or something happens with one, I have a backup because I, I have accepted the fact that I cannot play any longer without an ankle brace. Um, what am I packing this all in? This is the Raider bag from Tactical Tailor. This is what I have been using at Milsim's for the past four years, I believe. So it's gotten a lot of use out of it. Uh, it's kind of heavy, but it's super duper durable. I've used it tons of places. Um, and so it's really handy to have. It's got a top zipper for easy access. So this is where I like to put, um, I've got extra hair ties in here. I've got an extra red light in here. Um, and this is where I will generally put anything that I need to get to quickly. I'll put it in this top, uh, this top portion right here. So that way I know everything that I need in a moment's notice is right here. Um, also inside. Oh, I probably won't need these. I leave a lot of my stuff in my ruck between games, so that way I've got less stuff to take out, put back in. Um, but hot hands, <laughs> probably not gonna need these, so I'll take them out, because um, they definitely add weight. Then inside this pocket, I should have, yes. I always bring a little bit of newspaper um, this is one of my secrets for if your boots get wet or if your feet get wet, if anything happens, wad up newspaper, put it in your boots, soaks up all the moisture, put your boots inside your sleeping bag with you while you're sleeping, and then when you wake up, your boots will be dry. It's amazing. And I always 
like to bring a couple little extra trash bags for my dirty clothes. So that way I can put my dirty clothes in one of these bags, put them at the bottom of my ruck, and then I'm not one of the smelly kids. I really don't like being the smelly kid. I try to prevent it at all costs. Please, other air softers also do this. That would uh, be great. For sleeping materials. I've got this. This is a foam mat. It rolls up relatively compact and I can just attach it to the side of my ruck. Uh, it's got several straps on the side you can see here. So I just attach it on the side of my ruck for easy traveling. And then I have inside this uh, compression sack I have a sleeping bag with a waterproof bivy. So that is something that is going to keep all of the rain off. It is woodland. It has, so it has, it has a pattern on it. So that way you blend into the environment more. Um, and inside that bivy, I've got a fluffy black sleeping bag. It's an, um, it's a GI, an old GI sleeping bag that I got from a sur surplus store and it's so cozy. So, uh, I like being really comfortable when um, I'm at these games. A good night of sleep makes all the difference. So with that foam pad and with this, I'm super cozy. At some point, I am going to upgrade to something a little smaller and more compact. Um, but right now, this is what I'm working with. Uh, oh, yeah. Big. As far as gear. I'm going to be using this. This is the LBX uh, Assaulter Pack. I'm going to be wearing this on my back so that way I can carry snacks and things like that in there, plus my water. You do not want to be without water during these games. And uh, I need to get my camel back to put in here. That's the one thing I'm missing. Don't forget water. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, the good thing about Nelson West is that they provide water and at these games and... Um, you also have to use water in order to medic each other back in. So you're making sure that you get some of that water. But since I know it's going to be hot and humid, I'm going to be sweating a lot. I need to have um, my camelback packed in with this as well. So I'll do that as soon as I end the stream. All right. And then... I've got me Russian chest rig. Which one is this? I forgot. Is this a Jaeger? No, this isn't the Jaeger. Do you remember Jet? Yeah, Jaeger. Oh, it is the Jaeger. Okay. That's what I thought. Sorry. Don't read on me. So this is the chest rig that I'll be taking. Um, <laughs> I ha I wanted to make sure that I had something that closed and kept the mags really safe because I'm taking... The one downer to my AK is that it wasn't feeding the PTS palm mags. Uh, it was only feeding one kind of mag and they blend in, so I don't want to lose them. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to make sure I've got plenty of space for mags as well as space for a radio. And I've got the speaker, which I'll wear up here, makes life a lot easier. And then I've got my Milson West tourniquets. Now, Milson West games, they will provide you with tourniquets. I just like to bring some just in case. I always like to have an extra one or two since I've been to like 20 Milson West games. Um, I've got plenty. And I like to bring extra because there's always people in your squad who will end up losing theirs. And then they won't have a way to be buddyated and then you guys could be screwed because you're down a person. So I try to bring extra tourniquets whenever possible. And one last thing, I've got a headlamp charging. And those are definitely necessary for when you're just trying to get around. Um, I just finished charging, so don't forget your headlamp, ladies and gents. And then lastly, 
I'm taking this with me as well because I'm hoping to do a little bit of press in the downtime or um, while we're there, just so that way I can get a different aspect. So I'm going to be LARPing and also press LARPing while I'm there if I can make it all fit in my bag. <laughs> and so this is just to differentiate when I am LARPing as press so that way everybody knows I've got this on. should be a little bit easier to pick me out and then I'm not getting shot at as unnecessarily a bunch. So we'll see. All right, that covers it. Oh, here's the headlamp. Petzl is a good headlamp. You always know that they'll work really well. Um, the other one good thing is to have a headlamp that also has red light on it. I don't have one of those right now, but those are actually more beneficial for Milsim West games because in a lot of the games, uh, you have to obey light discipline, which means you can't white light at any time unless you are fighting because you don't want to give away your position. So unless you are in a super comfy spot, you can't be using your white light. I've got it anyway, just in case for like the scary trips to the bathroom in the middle of the night in Mexico. <laughs> okay, I think that covers everything, hopefully. Um, I'll take a couple questions. If you guys have any questions, let me know and I can answer questions for a little bit. And then uh, I'm gonna wrap it up so I can pack all of my stuff and get ready to go because we're leaving super early in the morning. Okay. Um, are you guys going to stream the Milsim or just put it as a video? Uh, we likely will not stream it just because we're going to be in Mexico and we have our limited and data there. So you only get, when you're traveling to Mexico, you only get like so many, you get only get so much data a day. I think it's like 10 gigabytes or something, I can't remember. Uh, so I likely will not be live streaming the game at all. It'll just be recording and showing later. Sorry, I would like to live stream it. Can't wait to see you and Jet at the next Desert Fox event. Next one is in January. So anybody that wants to come to Southern California for like a huge game, we're going to have tons of people there. Dayton's going to be there. JC is going to be there. Airsoft Alphonse. Um, we are bringing people in from hopefully Florida. We've got Revention is going to be there. So lots of people are going to be at that game. Should be pretty fun. I want to know what are the eye protection rules? Full seal. So the eye protection rules are full seal, yes, but in the sense that they have to, the eye, your eye protection has to cover your full eye socket. So that is how Milsim West interprets that. They have to be ANSI rated and completely cover your eye socket, which is those Smith optics. That's what that does. You should just put it on. My eye pro? Yeah. Jet said I should put it on to demonstrate. So you know. Yes. So you can see that it covers my whole eye. And I'll also have a hood on. So that will be protecting this part. So I don't have to worry about getting shot from, from the back. I shouldn't anyway, because you shouldn't be friendly firing me. But you never know. Oh, one last thing. I'm also packing this. This is just an identifier. You can wear on your arm, so that way everyone will know that I'm on the Russian team. Any TSA travel tips for airsoft rifles? <laughs> oh man, Jet and I have so many TSA stories. Um, the most important thing is, is to make sure that you know the TSA rules, have them saved on your phone, because a lot of times you will get an incompetent TSA person who does not know their own rules, the majority of the time, a lot of times that happens, unfortunately. Um, also, have them saved on your phone and be as nice as possible because if the TSA people want to ruin your day or if they're having a bad day and you're grumpy with them, they will absolutely ruin your day. Um, the other thing is to just make sure you can avoid most all problems if you pack your airsoft rifle in a hard case like this Declare it as a firearm. It's a really simple process. When you get to the airport, you just walk up. When you're checking in, you say, I need to declare a firearm. 
They give you a little form to fill out. You put it inside. You need to have two locks at least at minimum to go on your case. You lock your case up. You'll take it, um, you'll insert the information. You'll take it over to another TSA agent. They wipe down all of your case. They check it to make sure that there's nothing explosive in it or I don't know what they're checking for. That's what I'm guessing. Um, they do that and then they send you on your way. So you need to budget in about an extra half hour at the airport because that's about how long it takes. Kind of annoying, but it's the safest way to travel with your airsoft gun. Plus, if you declare it as a firearm, then it's insured like a firearm. So the TSA is not going to lose it because if they lose a gun, that's huge, bad, bad, bad for them. Um, are you going to Desert Fox events? do a Desert Fox events here in the Pacific Northwest. We are hoping to actually come to Canada. Stay tuned. That would be super cool. And we're going to be in Western Canada, like Vancouver area. Um, perfect, this is what I'm looking for. Cool, yay. Does anyone else have any international milsim or packing for milsim questions for me before? I sign off here in like three or four minutes. I'm ready. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed this. Um, jet people say hi. <laughs> he can see that. He's reading the comments. <laughs> I'm a big fan of you and Jet. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all of you guys' support, especially with the waves that YouTube goes in. <laughs> uh, favorite piece of kit? Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna say my iPro, because it's super comfortable, doesn't fog, and that's my favorite, and that's one thing that I wear all the time. All of my other kit changes and varies all the time. Um, just liked your video, watch this. Oh, channel for almost four years now. That's awesome. That means you've been around since like pretty much the beginning. Super dope. Okay, I'm not really seeing any more Milsim related questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up so I'm not streaming all night for those of you, but thanks for hanging out, really appreciate it. If you have any questions about traveling internationally or traveling for Milsims, Make sure to put them in the comments below and I tr will try to answer as much um, or as many questions as I can. I've been doing pretty good about answering all of the YouTube comments that are relevant. So yeah, make sure to drop a comment and I will answer it to the best of my ability. Oh, I saw one last question. What model are these? These are Smith, Smith Optics Aegis. Um, I did put a link for them on Instagram if you look at my story. So go check out my Instagram story on the tactical unicorn, all one word, on Instagram. And I have a link for those iPro right there. All right, cool. Thanks so much, guys. I will see you in Mexico. I'll be posting on my stories. So stay tuned to my channel. Make sure you're getting notifications. Bye, guys.